of mute and talk. Uh, I will be the time cop out here exactly 1145. I'm going to stop this discussion to start the other discussion, but we have two more minutes to discuss all of that. Uh -huh. Uh, Adash, there is a good question uh, on the chat from Sarah, mm -hmm. uh, who is in HR department working with technology companies, and uh, mm -hmm. she has mm -hmm. a question around career shift and start learning about cyber security. Uh, would that be a good career point? That is exactly what Brian's session is all about. So I'll let Brian take on that question, Sarah. Sarah, just hold on to that thought. I'm pretty sure... Uh, Brian will cover all your questions, and then if at all it's not covered, it'll be a better question at the end of his session. If you can just hold on to that thought. I think our presenters are great uh, this time. Uh, I hope uh, we get positive feedback out of this. Yeah. And I think one of the things which uh, which which at least I am very fond of our programs team in Testop is doing is the mentor mentee program, which is really coming up. So everyone who is on the call, uh, do sign up for the mentor mentee sessions. Uh, we are. Um, do we have Dave on the call who wants to give a one minute talk about what the mentor mentee session is? And I think it's a fantastic way to really help and you know the community. Dave or Kadir or whoever's there on the call to give a quick talk about it. Yeah, I, this is Kadir. I don't see Dave. Um, yeah, thanks, Adarsh. So, you know, the fundamental of mentor-mentee program is to help the individuals, right? So a lot of time people get confused about, as an example, you know, today we saw some questions. Uh, can I shift my career from testing to cybersecurity? You know, you see what I mean, right? So, you know, even in the cybersecurity, you have a, a role to play as a tester. So, you know, just as an example, so... There are there are many places what we believe our community individuals has to be graded um, by our community experts. So we wanted to create a platform to enable that. Uh, Get Appy is a is a platform um, provided by the company called Appy, right? Uh, which is which is helping us to enable uh, this mentor mentee program to to really help the individuals to understand um, what's the right uh, path in their career and and with not only the career but also from the point of view of you know, accessing the market as an as an entrepreneur or, or an innovator in, in many different angles, right? So we want to really create something around that to help our uh, community members. And that's why we, we, we are launching this mentor and mentee program, Adash. Hope it helps Excellent. for everyone. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, 11.46. Uh, Adash, note, if, I, yeah. if I can uh, take a minute. Uh, sure. You know, I, I really wanted to make sure that everyone in this call understands that we have moved from uh, using Slack to Microsoft Teams. Uh, I would really encourage the people who wants to join the Microsoft Teams for the collaboration, not only during, before and after the events, to send email to operations at testoper.com. Likewise, I also kindly request those who wants to collaborate um, uh, in, in GitHub for coding purpose. Again, please send email to operations at testoper.com. With that, over to you, Adash. And with that, over to Brian. Brian, take it on. <laughs> All right. I hope everybody got a, a good break and uh, let's have a fresh start. All right, so uh, I will share my screen here. Uh, give me one quick second. Yeah. All right, okay. So I, I, I do see a lot of uh, uh, questions regarding the cyber career, which is actually my area to talk about. Uh, so my talk uh, topic for today really is uh, unlocking cybersecurity opportunities. So far, you heard two great presentations about the future technology, actually emerging technology like AI, like a cloud, like all those security operation centers. And you also hear from Drew excellent talk about how that cybersecurity is important to financial industry, and there are huge career opportunities there. So let's talk about you before even I talk about myself or my topic. So why are you joining today's session? And think about that. You probably have a, a, I can see roughly there are three groups of people, right? So one is uh, uh, you're probably very new to cybersecurity. You just want to know, okay, what is cybersecurity really about? Uh, is that something I know already or is that something new to me? Another group of people probably you are in whatever field you are. Uh, I guess many of you are in the IT field or testing or QA or development. You more or less have an overlap with the cybersecurity. 
right? So it could be your feature requirement or your some like things you need to do. So you also want to say, okay, how that cybersecurity related to my job? And the third group, of course, cybersecurity you hear a lot today. Uh, like uh, there are so many things happening like uh, on the newspaper, on the internet, on the radio. And uh, you probably also hear there's a lot of uh, career opportunity in this field. You, you may think about, okay, is that something for me? And can I put myself on the fast track of a cyber career? So those are pretty much uh, three things I can imagine uh, in the group of common questions. Uh, okay, so let's quickly talk about myself, why I want to uh, qualify to talk about those things. Uh, I also call myself a catalyst, beautifully matched with the uh, uh, city of Brampton. Uh, there are so many catalyst uh, uh, like uh, programs there. So to me, catalyst really is putting things together to inspire you to do something amazing, right? So this is my background. I'm also in the cybersecurity for uh, several years. And uh, I'm, I'm also the very happen to today's topic, I'm the Microsoft Certified Trainer for Cybersecurity, uh, Azure Security as well. I'm also the teacher. I'm teaching at uh, like a university college, Lambton College in Mississauga. I was uh, teaching there for five, uh, five semesters. Um, and recently we also launched a uh, cloud security experiential learning. So which are combining, we actually based on the Microsoft Azure. So uh, combining the cloud and the security and uh, ed educate the future talent. And uh, I also learned many things from, not by myself, from all the industry leaders, I, because I'm also the organizer of the cyber tech and the risk. So we have so many people from industry talk about all kinds of domains related to cybersecurity. So I learned a lot of things from them and also happy to share that with you. Uh, if you're interested, probably you can also visit uh, our website enlightening.com. So that's a dedicated to cyber career development. So you can check it out. And uh, of course, if you're interested about cloud security, you can learn from there. So today's topic is unlocking cyber security opportunities. So what does that mean? What kind of opportunities you may have in the cyber security? I think uh, Drew also touched on that, but Derek also touched on that one. The reason you want to get to the cybersecurity really because it's a huge market. So think about that. If you, uh, doesn't matter if you want to start your career or start a business. So let's say you are a startup. Which domain you want to tap into if you think about all kinds of startup uh, opportunities? One of the domain you probably can think about is the cybersecurity. Really because this industry has a lot of money. And uh, globally estimated by cybercrime cost by 2021 is a six, so many zeros. So you can think is uh, how many things there's actually really is the six trillion. So six trillion dollars, but that number was uh, posted uh, a couple of years ago. I would say that number is much, much higher right now. And a lot of people kind of, uh, if you are not in finance, if you are not in accounting, probably you don't have an idea about what six trillion means. So I gave you a quick example. So you have this uh, 100, by the way, this is a six trillion US dollars. So Canadian, you're probably looking at uh, probably uh, like a 10 trillion. So if you have a 100 uh, US dollars bill like this, flat, just stack about that one. So how high can you get for $1 trillion? In fact, people kind of uh, try to guess that one, well, is that as high as uh, like a CN Tower, like uh, in Toronto? Or is that like uh, as high as uh, like a uh, highest mountain or like those things? By the way, the highest mountain in the world is uh, mountain uh, Everest. So it's uh, about like uh, 8,400 some uh, meters. So people estimate one trillion dollars, if you put it this way, it's like 1,000 kilometers, roughly. Mm. What does it mean? It's more like, uh, more or less like uh, 120 or 130 mountain Everest put together, that kind of uh, money you talk about. So th this is just a quick analogy to tell you this is a big market. And uh, Drush also talked about the cyber uh, skills gap. So this is a picture actually back to, uh, 2016. Uh, so Asaka estimated a 2 million global shortage uh, in 2016. 
So they estimate, because there are so many challenges in cybersecurity, the number one challenge Drew also mentioned is actually the talent. Guess what's the number right now? 2019, that number actually increased. So the IC squared to uh, IC squared estimate that globally it's around 4 million. Of course, you can argue is that 3.5, 4, or that doesn't matter. But the trend is there. So they, the cyber talent, the shortage actually become the bigger. And this is, of course, is a global number. So, but if you look at North America, so North America roughly you will get a half million. And it, what, what's the number in Canada? You can do a quick math. So in Canada, usually it's one tenth of a U.S. market. So you were looking at around like a 7,000, 8,000, like a talent gap there. But uh, before we jump to that, before you, I assume you're relatively new to cybersecurity. So we need to establish some basic concept or kind of idea what exactly is a cybersecurity. And uh, people bring this one, actually, I, I encountered this question a lot of times, even when I was uh, teaching at uh, university and colleges, and uh, we have a kind of a forum, so quite many university college, the cyber leaders come together. So we try to establish, okay, so some like a cybersecurity curriculum. But then before we even jump to that, people ask, okay, what is exactly the cybersecurity? What kind of things can we put to the, the material? Mm -hmm. So immediately that's trigger a lot of argument. Right, so what exactly the cybersecurity? And uh, when we talk about cybersecurity, many people immediately think about virus, not a COVID-19, but a physical, uh, like a computer virus, like a malware, like a ransomware included. Uh, that's true, because it's a lot of times uh, we, we think about cybersecurity, security actually start with the computer virus. But then people think, okay, this is IT work. A lot of like a, a classic uh, management, risk management people think, okay, cybersecurity is just an IT problem. So uh, IT guys, you're you are an IT guy, go to figure it out. Then there's uh, like uh, people talk about, okay, from network point of view, uh, can we put uh, like a VPN or put uh, some firewall there or like an encryption or like a, nowadays the cloud becomes so popular. So uh, is that cloud is a solution or is that cloud increase the, the, the chances for cybersecurity breach? And another term, of course, everybody talk about is a hacker. So they equal to, okay, cybersecurity is hacking or some hackers are doing some malicious things. So all those are kind of a common topics related to cybersecurity, as you can see day to day. And when I look at all those topics, and I'm immediately think about this picture. And what is this picture? If you just look at this one, is that like a, a rope? Is that like a fan? Or is that like a wall? Or is that like a tail? Something like a, a leg? In fact, this picture, when you put it together, it's an elephant. There's a story for like a visually impaired people try to touch the elephant. Depends on which part they touch, they will describe the elephant like, okay, elephant is like a rope, it's like a tail, it's like a wall, like a fan. But cybersecurity is like this elephant. You have to look at it holistically. Right, so what exactly is cybersecurity? And the, actually, it's a quite a new term. Like own, it becomes one word recently uh, in the last couple of years. Um, before, it's a, like a information security, IT security, computer security, and or maybe cyber security is a two words. So to understand that, I like to cut that one. So one is a cyber, one is a security. Right, so what is cyber and what is security? And the cyber, you pretty much kind of touch that. Right now, everybody kind of familiar with that. What's inside this cyber? What's this is, a, we call it a digital world. So uh, compare with our physical world, like uh, all the tables, uh, the house, the car you can touch. This is a digital world. What kind of things you can see in this digital world? You have a devices, you have a communication, you have a systems, you have a information. What does it mean, devices? Devices is like your computer, your laptop, or like your, your phone, or your even your wearable devices, IoT, all those things are devices. But within this world, those devices have to talk to each other to make it work, right? So the communications is like internet, or the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, all those things to connect those devices together. And on each of those devices, you have systems. 
so to run it, like uh, operation systems or like uh, applications, apps. So application uh, OS is like a Microsoft, uh, like a Windows or iOS or Ad uh, like a, uh, Android, all those things, right? And on those systems, you produce a lot of information. And the information can be included like, uh, uh, for example, your documents, your videos, uh, your audios, uh, and the things put into the database, structured, unstructured. So if I give you this kind of a concept, just roughly describe this cyber, that's, those are the things there and how they relate to each other. Then what is security? In a nutshell, it's okay, of course, we need to protect all those things. So we call security. In cybersecurity term, there are three things very important. We call it uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. If you know those words already, so that's, uh, that's okay. So that's simple to you. But if you are relatively new to this one, uh, I quickly give you a definition. So confidentiality is regarding the read function. So like uh, you, 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 you have your bank account, right? So you don't want to let other people know what, what's your balance there, right? So that's confidentiality. Integrity means the right, about the right. So you have an account there for like say $10,000. You don't want to have other people to modify that account without your permission, right? So that's integrity. Availability is you always want to access your bank account. Doesn't matter if it's from your computer or your phone, mobile banking. So let's talk about availability. So security really is about to ensure those three things, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And when you connect those two things together, cyber, security, so you can get a lot of job titles. So people ask, what kind of jobs I can get? You can, from just this picture, you get a lot of ideas. So if you talk about devices, confidentiality, integrity, and availability, you pretty much get like those uh, a typical desktop security uh, position, the, the, the system uh, like a security position. If you talk about communication, you pretty much get a network security, you pretty much talk about like a web security, system security information, you talk about data uh, analyst, uh, data security analyst. So you kind of like uh, can cross those things together. So that's a, in a nutshell, it's what is a cybersecurity. At the end of the day, you can just remember there's a triangle. So confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And people give it the name of the CIA triads. And when you can achieve those three things, we usually say, okay, you can get the security. But this is just the nutshell, the basic understanding what is cybersecurity, is security really about. But of course, each for those three things, uh, the perfect question for you is, can you achieve all those three things together? In most of cases, you cannot. It's just like a project management, you cannot achieve three things. In project management, you have uh, three keywords called time, cost, scope. Can you achieve all three things together? Normally you're not. You have to kind of like, uh, based on your strategy to ensure two things, uh, probably have to compromise a little bit for the other. So that's called your cybersecurity strategy. So it depends on the company you have. So for example, if you are the bank, you pretty much have focus more on the confidentiality, integrity part. You have to kind of like uh, sacrifice a little bit about the availability, which means you have to put a lot of protection there and check again and again. But if you are the startup, a lot of times you more focus on the accessibility, right? So to get your apps out of the market fast, at least from this stage. So that depends on your corporate strategy. You kind of come up with your cybersecurity strategy. And people ask, why cybersecurity is your career focus? Why this one can help me for the long run? Because uh, there's so many things you can do. For example, in IT field, it doesn't matter which, which language you're using. Like there's a Java developer, Python developer, there's a PHP developer. Over time, technology can go away. Or it's not that as hot as before, mm. right? So that's a challenge uh, you probably face. It. But what about cybersecurity? Is that going away in the like, uh, next uh, f uh, three to five years? Actually not because you always have this factor, human, unless someday, I don't know when, AI can completely replace human. Human will always make mistakes. People, human will always like uh, not 100% follow the rules, right? So human also will be good side and a bad side. There's a human including the hackers, 
right? So as long as you have a human factor, your cybersecurity, actually we talk about the people are the weakest link in the cybersecurity. As long as you have a human factor, cybersecurity will be always there. And when we talk about business, business need to go faster, 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 but at, at any time, doesn't matter you do DevOps or Agile, you always have to put the security there. So otherwise, just all of a sudden the business will collapse. And we talk about asset, right? So today you have a hundred computers, tomorrow you probably have a 10, like a 150 computers, or tomorrow probably you move several things to the cloud. So your asset list are keeping changing. So which means you will always have the things to relate it to the cybersecurity. And of course the technology, AI or blockchain or those IoT, I would argue um, you can put AI before any terms, so you can call AI for certain things, AI for like uh, for learning, AI for education, AI for cybersecurity, but you can also put security after any words. So which means when you have an AI, you can always have AI security. You have a blockchain, you will always have a blockchain security. <laughs> you know, if you have a IoT, you will talk about IoT security. So any cool technology, the immediate question asked for uh, after that technology is what about your security? In fact, including Microsoft, like when you're promoting the, the, the cloud, like Azure, immediately after that is Azure security. Compliance requirements, Drew touched on that. There are so many uh, compliance uh, requirements actually coming more and more. So you, which actually generate a lot of uh, career opportunities for you because so uh, uh, only few people know those things. And if you are those people, so you get a lot of chances to put you to the fast track of your career. And the threats, of course, because uh, this is a mouse and uh, like a cat and mouse game. So always the bar is keep raising. So the threat always there, the threat, uh, like hackers always try to find a new ways to break the system or you break the network. So we're on your side, you always keep uh, like used to, uh, keep learning and improving. So those are the cybersecurity challenges, but on the, from the career point of view, which also generate huge opportunity for you. And you don't worry about this field, you don't have a job someday. And people talk about what kind of job I can get. So I just quickly give you the idea. So this is based on the like IC squared, so CISSP uh, domains. So roughly there are eight domains in cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is a very, very broad. You cannot just think about it's like a, just a, a network firewall or like a VPN. So actually it's a very broad topic. I, sometimes I even think it's a broader than IT because they touch a lot of things to the business risk and also operation. So quickly, there's a security and a risk management, governance, a compliance. Actually, Drew is pretty much fit to that domain. Of course, Drew is expert on many, many things, but his job title is related to that one. And there's an asset security to manage all the infantry of your systems. And there's a security architecture and engineering to really work on those solutions for cybersecurity. And a communication network security, of course, to protect all those network, firewall, all those intrusion detection, those things. Identity and access management, also very important topic, digital identity. How do you make that authentication, authorization, and accounting process working? And which is a big demand, especially in large organizations like RBC. And the security assessment and testing, a lot of people here are QA background, that's a domain for you. Security assessment and testing, are you, what do you test? If you test related to security features, you are the security assessment and testing. And also people talk about the penetration test, that's also the domain you are looking at. Mm -hmm. So you think like a hacker to help your company to improve the security posture. And the security operations, of course, you need to monitor the things happening there. Uh, Derek mentioned that uh, Sentinel and all those related to security operations. And last but not least, everything is software. So software sec development security from day one, how do you write code? How do you follow the best practice of the architecture, the process, the DevOps process? So that's the key to looking at. So if you want to tap into cybersecurity, that's a very broad uh, uh, domains. And another interesting thing is the cloud is very hot right now, right? So uh, we did the Microsoft uh, Azure cloud security expansion learning. So you can also quickly map all those uh, cloud technology to all those domains. So for example, I just quickly map here. 
for security and risk management, right? So you have a, like all those policy scores, so you can follow those regulatory compliance. Asset security, you can have all those lists of uh, inventory. Security architecture and the design, right? So you have a map there. Communication within cloud, you can look at all the things from a network point of view. From identity and access management, from Azure point of view, there's Azure AD, Azure PIM, and all those uh, fancy Office 365, all those identity and access management. Security asset assessment and the testing. Sentinel also linked to the MITRE attack framework, and all, you can do all those things there. Security operation, uh, Sentinel and a security center, all those places are monitored there. And the software development security, for all those uh, DevOps process, you can see how security like embedded with this uh, process. So everything on cloud, so you can do all those things. Of course, there's uh, on-premise things linked to cloud that says uh, uh, multi-cloud uh, multi and a hybrid cloud solutions. All right, so before I close my talk, so just quickly want to share with you your potential job and uh, salaries. So this is uh, just give you some inspire you or <laughs> encourage you to do that. So here is a number from uh, like a US, uh, like uh, all those are US dollars for some top 10 IT security jobs and salaries, big bucks. Of course, you need to be good. It's not like you to, tomorrow you learn something, you will get this number, but that tells you the future and uh, your career path or your goal to for some like average uh, uh, numbers. And this number actually a couple of years ago, I would argue the number right now is uh, even higher. Uh, another perspective to look at this is uh, IT certifications, top paying, top 10 certifications for 2020. Here are th four, actually four uh, cybersecurity related certification in the top 10. And uh, the, uh, the, part, the money is the average salary there. And I guess uh, Drew got uh, CISP, the, the number of sales. So, so you, you kind of like a combine those uh, money for Drew's salary, you can get a guess. And so this also, it's a reference, just tells you how hot is the cybersecurity and what industry need for the cybersecurity professionals. And especially when you combine, so you're probably curious, what's the number one in this uh, certification? Actually, number one, number two, or other related to the cloud. So. In a way, if you think smartly, if you combine cloud and the security and the DevOps process all together, actually you are in a very good position to get a high pay. And uh, Drew mentioned that uh, actually this is uh, the person uh, you probably know, Robert Herjavec. So he is a, a shark. Many people know him because he's a shark in the shark tank. And uh, not many people know him because uh, he is actually the founder and the CEO of a very famous uh, cybersecurity company called Herjavec Group. And he put a wording like this, we are one of the few industries globally experiencing 0% unemployment rate. So think about that. What does that mean to you? All right, so to wrap it up, cybersecurity opportunities, uh, catch me if you can. A lot of people are doing that. Don't be late. If you're interested in that, go ahead to do it. Do something. And uh, you can also visit our website to find out more programs. And as I mentioned, uh, we are doing the cloud security expansion learning. And interesting, Drew and I are working together in this uh, uh, expansion learning. So if you want to learn more, you can find out there. And uh, I put my contact uh, link here. So if you are interested, we can connect there. All right, so that's it. And uh, I stop sharing and, uh, and I back to the host.